it's Jason Gow, Client Communications and Marketing Manager uh, at Violi Australia New Zealand. We're at the Violia booth at Oswater 16, uh, so we're doing our third broadcast of the morning. I'm today standing here with Karen Shaw, who's Client Manager for Violia Water Technologies in Australia. Uh, so good morning, Karen. Good morning, Jason. Great. So. Uh, you're actually running uh, or you'll be participating in a workshop on recycled water uh, coming up later on in the event which is very exciting uh, so how important do you think uh, recycled water is for the water in industry in general being oh, important? it's very important um, two of the major challenges that we're facing today in securing our water supply for Australia come down to dealing with our population increase and also climate impact um, just for an example, Sydney, current population 5 million is set to increase to over 8 million by yes. 2060. Um, that's nearly an 80% increase in population in a relatively short period of time. On top of that, during that period, we'll be looking at needing to cope with a couple of drought situations. So recycled water gives us a non-rain dependent source of water which will become an essential part of um, ensuring the water security of our future. Recycled water can be used for lots of things. It can be used for toilet flushing, laundry, it can be used for watering the gardens, creating the green space that's going to be so important for our sustainable cities of the future. Um, so therefore it's a really, really important part of our solution for Australia. Fantastic. Yeah, so you actually led the delivery of a, a project recently that employed uh, Violia Technologies, which is fantastic. Uh, so this happened in Sydney. Could you actually describe a bit about that project and what was involved? Yes, that project was quite an exciting project for us. It was um, a small recycling water plant built in the basement of a low-rise commercial building right in the centre of Sydney. Um, a couple of the challenges that we faced with that particular project, uh, first of all, was space. There was only a very, very small amount of space available. As you can imagine, space comes as a premium yes. in these big, big uh, buildings in the city. Um, so we were required to come up with some clever t technical solutions to, to, to build that plant within a very small space, which we did very effectively. Um, the other key challenge from the client was odour. It's right in the central dis district. There's lots of restaurants. It's very busy. It's a, a very active social environment for the city there. So obviously any, any sort of odour from that plant would have been unthinkable. So our solution had to really cover that off. And we provided odour treatment at each of the treatment process units, as well as in with the room itself. Um, and it's been incredibly effective. The plant's now been running for five years, very successfully, um, and we're very, very proud. It was actually the first plant of its type to go into operation under the WICA, the Water Industry Competition Act regime. So it was a, a really proud moment for us when that one oh, went into operation. So this uh, demo unit here uh, is uh, MBBR technology. So it was one of the technologies used in that project. Yes, yeah. Can you describe a bit about the process and, and, and what's actually happening here? Yeah, we, we use the MBBR in the process um, primarily because of its ability to, to use much smaller tanks. That was one of the key reasons. Um, to describe the process itself, it's a it's based on a fixed film type process, which means that um, the bacteria, which is very, very important to biological wastewater treatment, grows on the surface, on any surface. In this case, it happens to be the surface within this chip. Uh, the chips have been very, very, very carefully designed over many, many years to give the ideal amount of surface area and it provides a really safe, secure home for our bacteria to live and grow. Um, on top of providing a, um, a, a place for them to grow, we also, also need to provide the bacteria oxygen and carbon. Carbon comes from the wastewater itself and the oxygen we pump into the, into the process via um, air. Okay. So the chips are agitated, which really improves the um, oxygen efficiency. Yes. And the ultimate effect is, um, compared to a conventional wastewater treatment plant, you could be looking at volume requirements as less as as small as 50% of what, what would be required okay. in a conventional treatment. So plant. when you compare it to alternative offerings in the marketplace, uh, what are, what's the difference in using this type of technology? Uh, well, key is volume. Yep. Smaller volume, as I've said a couple of times now, um, and. Other 
other areas are its robustness, its very robust treatment process, so it can cope with ver large variations in load. Yes. So if, for instance, your COD goes very high or very low, this treatment process will cope very well with, with those variations in load. It'll also cope very well with toxic shocks to the system. Often with wastewater treatment, you, you're not sure what you're going to be getting in the door, and there can be some industrial waste or something that's going to upset your bacteria. Okay. Because it's so carefully protected in these chips, it means that it's more likely to survive those toxic shocks and continue its, on its life doing its Great. thing. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thanks so much for your time, Karen, and all the best with your workshop later on in the event. And, yes. uh, thanks, thank you. Jason. Cheers. Thank, thank you. you.